Right everyone, weapon collector here. Right, I'm going to try to make a wakazashi from a weed slasher. Normally this would have a wooden handle on it, but I've taken the handle off already because I wanted to check that this design would work. Uh, I was looking at my katana and I realised that the katana wasn't as wide as this, which then made me realise you could probably get a bit of a curve on one of these by cutting away here, here and here creating a slight curve, slight curved blade. So I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but you'll see it when it gets going. Yeah, so these weed slashes are around about nine quid on eBay. It's a good tempered and hardened steel. It bends back to its original shape. So it's got a good bit of flexibility. Good for a lightweight homemade sword. Um, <clears throat> yeah and perfect for someone like me who doesn't do forge work. So first thing I'll be doing is cutting off the tip and shaping this into the blade shape. Also I'm going to do a couple of traditional things with this if possible. So I'm going to have the habaki is it called? The metal collar there. Then the suba, maybe the two little round um, discs spaces between those two and then a traditional wooden handle that slots on with a pin but I don't know how I'm going to finish that if I'm going to um, wrap that in anything and then put a collar on the end I'll have to see about that but it'll definitely be reasonably traditional with the stuff I've got and the capabilities I have so the first thing will be cutting off the tip and shaping this into the blade About one and a half hours later, I think, of grinding. I didn't show the whole process because it's just the same. I took people's advice about only running the grinder one way when putting the edge on and the bevel, and that's a much nicer bevel this time than the other one. It's not finished, it's just to get the basic shape though. I'm happy with that. Later on, it'll be slightly more refined, but this is the basic. You know, we're going to take the paint off later. There's a little bit here that needs doing. Um, but yeah, that's enough for me to work on other stuff. So you're going to have to excuse me if I keep getting the names wrong to some of these parts so I can never remember them. I'm going to attempt to make a habaki now, which is the piece of sort of brass that goes around this part of the blade. So I will essentially just be bending it round. Um, shaping it and I may try to curl the end over and sort of cold forge it closed, closed if not I will do what they do which is slide a piece of the brass in with some solder heat it up so yeah and quickly cut this to size you don't need to see that I'm just going to make it a slightly thinner bit um, and then I'll start bending it not sure this is going to matter which way. It's got a covered side, but I've got a feeling it's all going to get scratched anyway, so we'll have the covered side out first. See this right, can't we? Alright, that should do. Uh, needs to shut up a little bit. Thank you. 
Right, that should do it. It's not going to be as big as a proper one. But that will now go to where it's supposed to. Which will then hold this in place for me to curl it over. Should still look good. So there you go. Anyway, we've got a habaki. Um, what I can now work on is the guard. I'm going to make a aluminium guard. I think you can see that. So what I'm going to need to do now is cut this out of a hacksaw, cut the rough shape, drill the holes for the tang to go in, um, and then finish it off. So the first thing I'll do is just cut that out of a hacksaw. Right, so that's the guard roughly fitted. Still needs shaping and finishing off, but it fits. <coughs> what I might do now is make one of these. I'm just going to make one, just to go there. One of these little brass collars. So that'll just be. I'll just cut that out with a pair of tin snips, and then basically chisel the lining. You don't really need to watch me do that. Um, It'll be pretty much, if or if I drill it, it'll be pretty much the same method as this. Just a thin bit of brass, just to go on top of that. And then we start working on the handle. Going to work on the handle scales now. Still don't know whether these will be wrapped or not, we'll have to see. But, uh, for now, it will be a case of... Marking the tang. chiseling it out and then shaping it but I won't stick it together until I um, definitely know uh, where the pins are sorry Right, so I've got the handle scales done. Before I go any more, I'm going to put them in the right place. I hope you can, you can see this. And now I've marked for where the pins will be. So I'm going to drill those out on one side. So it's, at least I've got the guidelines. I was trying to measure that afterwards. So I'll drill those two out. I won't do this side till later when it's um, glued together. Might be worth when you put these together run the sword in and out a couple of times just to make sure it's uh, not filled up with glue should be alright though so make sure your ends are flush right I'm going to start shaping this handle now
Right, I'm going to carry on sanding these bits because what it means then, once these are sanded and sort of finished, I can put them on and then I can actually put the handle on. I'm not going to have the handle so it can be took on and off because I doubt I'd ever do that anyway. So I'm probably going to fit those on and glue the handle on and then it's rock solid then. I don't have to mess around waiting for things and I can get on with it. Otherwise I have to wait for, because this glue is taking ages to dry as well. So yeah, I doubt I'd ever be taking this apart anyway. I'm going to glue the handle on because it'll just be easier for me in the long run. Um, I doubt I'd ever take this part anyway and the issue is doing pins and pegs in these kind of things you have to be very precise. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I'll probably do another one and with that one I'll try the, the pins but to be honest I'm even struggling this glue doesn't seem to be wanting to hold this wood together so I'm having a lot of issues at the minute I think it would just be easier for me to um, glue it I'm still going to drill through and put the pins through though the pegs it's just the handle won't be able to come off uh, it'll still look traditional so that's what I'm going to do now it's all sort of been checked everything seems good I'm just going to pour some glue in the handle put it in and it can be left to dry next day so I'm carry on now so the handle is nice and solid I've just put this sort of little groove on there so that this end cap can go on because I'm going to try to wrap this traditionally the only thing I've got is a bloody shoelace hopefully it's long enough if not I'll have to look into something else uh, and then that can be tucked under there I'm probably going to rivet this handle on now um, so I'm going to rivet it with a nail, possibly then maybe put a piece of leather on, thin leather if I've got it, dye that red, possibly dye this black, I'm not sure at the minute. Bit of a strange idea, I don't know what you've got to think of this, but I'm going to initially cover this handle with red felt. So we'll see what this comes out like. This will just be for underneath anyway. But um, yeah, see what it comes out like. <clears throat> it might be quite good. Or it might not. Right, I am going to wrap this stuff around here. It's not going to be the traditional way. It's going to be wrapped round, and then what I do, I take one side, take it back over, and I take this one back over. So it will give it a bit of a look of the traditional sort of wrap, but it's not. Um, this is the best I can do with what I've got, because I've also had to start this again. <laughs> halfway through because the lace wasn't long enough as I say it doesn't matter I can always prepare better um, as you know with me a lot of the stuff I do I just do it as I go along so it just you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't right I'm gonna varnish this handle now hopefully I don't <laughs> regret doing this but yeah it'll this solidify the um, lace and make it uh, stronger harder to hold which I think I prefer because it's a little bit squishy at the minute a little bit sort of soft to touch we'll see how it goes right I've covered up the handle so I can get this black paint off the blade and sharpen it up I'm running out of light today so I might just finish off the sword itself and then make the scabbard Monday or something like that 
because uh, I wouldn't mind having a bit of a cut with this today. So there was the cut in, as you see, it does cut pretty well. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll call this end of part one. Um, so you've seen the basic sort done and a practical test. What I'll do next in a part two is make the scabbard, potentially sort out the handle, and I've noticed there's still a little bit more paint to take off the blade, and then it'll be done. And then I'll probably do some more cut in afterwards that was just a little test because I just wanted to see um, how it would cut and it does cut well so yeah there'll be a part two and then you can see the finished product I may do a couple of pictures at the end of this but this isn't really finished yet there's still some work to do on it but yeah I think we'll call that end of part one that's how to make the sword um, yeah part two we'll just finish it off and then I'll show you the pictures. Right, hope you enjoyed the video. If there's any pictures coming up, you'll see in a minute. And I um and I'll see you later.